A good road trip clears my mind, journeying down the landscape, just the road and us, endless kilometers, winding its way through the mountains and valleys, almost mesmerizing as the landscape wanders by. We drove without a destination, but always had a place in mind, the Lofoten Islands. And we never would have dreamt what the next two months would be like. In the last episode, we took the ferry over to the Lofoten Islands. We decided not to go to the main island directly and make a detour via Varoy. Varoy is a relatively small island on the southern end of Lofoten, with only about 600 inhabitants. There's a bigger village and some scattered houses, divided by a massive ridge line stretching from one side of the island to the other. We made our way to the west side of the island and stumbled upon an abandoned airport, which was the perfect spot to rest and pack our gear for tonight's hike. Our destination is the ridge line behind us. We started the hike and the weather looked like it could ruin the adventure. Thick clouds were coming in from the ocean. And the higher we walked, the more we walked into the clouds. But we were too close to the end that we decided to keep going. When we arrived at the end of the ridge, everything aligned. We ended up just a tiny little bit higher than the clouds, and the conditions couldn't have been better for us. An inversion of clouds, wrapping around the ridge line in front of me, and with the sun at its lowest, the landscape and the clouds lit up in a golden tone, all in strong contrast to the deep blue of the ocean. We took a moment to catch our breath and rest. It was a peaceful and tranquil moment, with no one else around and complete silence. Even the sound of the ocean was muffled by the thick clouds that surrounded us. On our way back, we decided to take another route, one that is closer to the edge of the ridge, where the clouds hung. The view from there was nothing short of breathtaking. We were almost 500 meters above the sea, looking at the vast expanse of the ocean, with golden clouds dancing in front of us. A view that we will never forget. The next day, we took it easy on the old airport and went for a little stroll around the base. In distance, you can already see the next destination of today. With the most beautiful weather, we set off from Vado. 
in the late evening. As we sailed across the ocean, the midnight sun lit up our way. A natural phenomenon that occurs in high latitudes during the summer months. And as the name suggests, the sun remains visible even at midnight. It's a surreal and otherworldly experience, difficult to describe, but truly unforgettable. Casting the landscape in a warm golden light that lasts for several hours throughout the night. You just need to completely throw over your sleeping ribbon. But since we come here all summer, we kind of got used to it. And it only takes a couple of days until we adapt to the new schedule. This way we can stay up until the morning and sleep during the day. A nice side effect of this, places are usually not crowded during night. We woke up the next afternoon and prepared for our hike. The summit we wanted to reach is called Stornabstinden and offers magnificent views over the mountains around, as it's one of the highest in the area with over 730 meters. On the summit, we just sat there and watched the midnight sun move along the horizon before it started to rise again. The following day, we left and slept in a parking lot next to another hike. A very popular among the hikes in Lofoten. With open views over a large bay and a beautiful beach, the hike to Rüten takes you along a steep cliff, ending at around 500 meters above the ocean. It's one of the most popular hikes in Lofoten, and you shouldn't expect to be alone up here. On the highest point, there's a rock, where you can probably take one of Lofoten's most famous photos. And with the right perspective, it looks like you are hanging right above the ocean. Unfortunately, clouds came in, and we weren't able to fully experience the midnight sun on the peak. Still, we waited, and it was a beautiful sight to see the clouds dancing along the ridgeline. Some say Lofoten is the most beautiful end of Norway. Located several hundred kilometers above the Arctic Circle, roughly 80 islands reach westward into the blue Arctic Ocean. The islands are known for their unique mountain landscape, with sharp peaks rising steeply from the sea level. This rugged terrain makes it a paradise for hiking and outdoor recreation, with countless summits, beaches and lakes to explore. And with just a few restrictions, it's allowed to camp in most places. For those who are interested, 
we have linked the map with all relevant regulations in the video description. This evening we packed our camping gear and made our way up to a beautiful mountain lake nestled between high peaks. When we arrived the scenery was stunning, with the mountains reflecting perfectly in the still waters of the lake. As we set up our camp and made ourselves comfortable, the wind started picking up. After checking the weather forecast, it looked like a big storm cell was due to arrive in the morning. And we made the decision to pack up and head back to our van in the middle of the night. The next morning, we woke up in the safety of our van, grateful that we hadn't been caught in the midst of the storm in our tent. It was pouring down outside, and we knew we had made the right decision. Lofoten is located in the middle of the ocean, roughly 80 kilometers away from the coastline of the mainland. So the weather can be more like a gamble sometimes. And sadly, the weather forecast looked pretty frustrating for the upcoming week. We had the option to either sit it out or to move. As it didn't look bad for the mainland, with pretty much sunshine for the whole week, we opted for a short road trip to the other side. We lost our days. Now we know we did it all. On a peninsula opposite side of Lofoten, the weather already looked much better. We had We went for a midnight hike to a mountain cabin at almost 600 meters. The path led through a dense and humid forest, and it seemed like the mosquitoes were just waiting for us to enter. But once we reached the tree line, it got much better, and the view down to the beach was very rewarding. We continued up the steep path until we were surrounded by rocks and scrambled up a peak next to us. After soaking in the view for a while, we headed back down a bit to the cabin, had a tea and some snacks, while enjoying the faint sunrise. Soon it was time to hike back down and continue to the next area. And with the golden light from the night sun, 
we arrived at the national mountain of Norway, Stettent. Driving along this road truly is an unforgettable experience. The mountains, especially in this light, look like they are straight out of a fantasy movie. Meanwhile, we completely lost track of our sleeping rhythm, but that makes life much easier up here. We woke up to beautiful weather and decided to take a stroll up a nearby mountain. The warm wind and nearly 30 degrees Celsius temperature made for a perfect day. We walked up a massive granite plate and had lunch on the pass, surrounded by views to sharp mountains and distant glaciers. This is what we love most about being here. The endless hikes just outside your doorstep. Allowing us to do things like this and enjoy simple things like our food in a place like this. All alone with nothing but silence and nature. And as I forgot to bring cutlery on this hike, we had to use our coffee spoon to eat our meal. When we walked up the mountain, we noticed a lot of streams running down the granite. The warm weather had turned the stone into a natural heater, and the water gathered in several pools. We couldn't resist taking a refreshing dip in one of these, especially in this magical atmosphere. Our small road trip on the mainland came to an end and we followed the picturesque road back to Lofoten, guided by the midnight sun.
like, we took the great weather with us from the mainland. Temperatures up to 30 degrees, so that we even went for a couple of swims in the ocean. A month has passed and we have spent most of it on Lofoten, with plans to stay at least four more weeks in the area. Having this much time has allowed us to catch the perfect moments for hiking. The footage you will see capture many of those moments, with perfect light and conditions. But what you don't see that much is that we also spend many days sitting out the rain on the campsite or in the van. How can Hannes arrive to Lofoten and will join us for the coming weeks? We spend our first days by the ocean, catching up on stories and memories. Some days later, we met Ani and Matthias again, and we let time fly by by the campfire and planned the adventures of the next days. Full of energy, we started a steep climb to one of those places high on my list. Sadly, we weren't able to go all the way to the summit, as low clouds came into our way. But already the view from the saddle completely blew me away. And so we sat down and waited for the sun to move around the mountain. Back down we drove to the shore and spent the rest of the night enjoying the calm atmosphere. As the years have gone by, Lofoten has become more than just a place we visit. It has almost become a second home for us, a place where we keep coming back to discover new corners and hidden gems every time we visit. The old fishing cabins and villages speak to the centuries-old history of Norway, and the open and friendly locals make us feel welcome every time. But I would lie if it's not for the breathtaking scenery. There's a bit of everything here. Countless mountains with different views, picturesque beaches with always towering granite walls in the back. And because the weather is so unpredictable, every visit is different and you never know what to expect. And with many other like-minded people always around or coming for a visit, kind of a community has been established. More friends joined our group and we packed our gear to head out to a remote beach in the Lofototen National Park. The weather didn't look promising as we took the ferry across the fjord. I 
We started the hike over the pass with no clouds, wind and rain. But for our luck, the weather started to clear up the further we hiked. And we were rewarded with sunshine at the end of our trek. We pitched our tents on a grassy hill overlooking the beach and settled in for the evening. Surrounded by good company, we had dinner and got lost in sharing stories with the sound of the ocean in the background. In moments like this, I'm super grateful for the friendship that brings us all together and a reminder that some of the best moments in life are the simple ones. The next morning began easy, with coffee and fresh water from the stream. We packed everything together and set off on the hike back over the beach. And here I realized the vastness of this place. With good weather in the forecast, we decided to take the boat across the fjord and start a new hike right away. With quite sore legs, we set off to hike, which turned out to be one of the most beautiful I have ever done. Although it had some serious steep parts and in total over 900 meters elevation gain, it was a complete joy to hike in this breathtaking landscape. In reaching the summit, with the view that opened up, was one of those moments I will never forget. Thanks team 
for these amazing days. The next day, we repacked our gear and set off on another hike, a ridgeline that I had been to in 2018. We pitched our tents next to the massive wall, waiting out the weather for two days in the camp until we could finally start to hike the 600 meter granite peak. As we started, we were unsure if this is going to work out. Thick clouds blocked the horizon, and more clouds were on the higher elevations of the mountains surrounding us. We got onto the ridge, and our frustration was on a new high as we climbed right into a cloud. The air turned cold, wet, and we saw nothing but grey. But we had come too far to turn around. And after another hour of hiking, we saw a faint orange glow in the clouds, a glimmer of hope that we might be above them soon. We all had the motivation again as we moved on, slowly going through the clouds, knowing that there's a 600 meter drop just next to us. With the last few meters, we stepped above the clouds. Hard to describe this feeling. The view that awaited us on the summit completely blew me away. Clouds so close that it felt like I could almost touch them. Lit up by the last bit of light and moving with such an unreal speed that all footage looks like time lapse. By the time we hiked this mountain, the season of the midnight sun had already ended and we experienced our first real sunset. The sun went down at around 11 p.m. and sunrise was at 3 a.m. So we tried to find a sheltered place, snuggled into our thick down jackets and waited for the light to be back. The only sheltered place we could find on the peak was a steep grassy slope with no chance to sleep. Despite being cold, we were still motivated and stepped onto the summit again to see the first sunrise. The warmth of the rising sun was highly welcomed this morning and we tried to withstand the cold winds while the first rays casted a warm glow across the rugged landscape. Tired and frozen, but happy 
Another adventure for the books. Later we started the descent to the beach, ready to spend the next few hours in the sleeping bag and eat everything that was left in the tents. As our final day on Lofoten was closing in, we enjoyed the last sunset by the beach and we both ended up in a moment of quiet reflection, rewinding the past weeks grateful for everything that happened. Ten more incredible weeks of memories from these islands, new friendships and a lot of peaks hiked. With a performance from Anna, we said goodbye to the Lofoten and continued our journey north. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home, country roads. All my memories gather round her, miners, ladies, stranger to blue water, dark and dusty, painted in the sky, misty days of moonshine, teardrop in my eye, country road, take me home. To the place where I belong, West Virginia, Mount Mama, take me home, country roads. I hear the voice in the morning as she calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. I'm driving down the road, I get a feeling that I should have gone home yesterday, yesterday. Country roads take me home to the place where I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. Country roads.